We're going to talk today about our handbook for the Lamar County School District. Many changes have happened this year in our handbook, so we're going to talk about each one of these in our ICT2 classes this week. We'll try not to um, do much at a time, that way we won't bore you, but be ready at the end to answer questions. Of course, our school opening and closing times are 825 and 325. If you are a car rider, you need to be prepared to leave school about 315. You cannot come on campus this year before 730. That is a change from the past. Um, in the past, you were allowed to come on campus earlier. This year, it is 730. Every one of you that are listening to this are already enrolled, so we don't have to talk about enrollment. Of course, your signed forms are all back or you would not be enrolled. If you eat breakfast every morning, you're going to pay $1.75 for your breakfast. A reduced breakfast is $0.30, cents, and your student lunch is $2.60. So for our cafeteria, you know, we all would love to be able to eat out each day. We can't do that. Um, we have to eat in our cafeteria or bring a lunch from home. So you cannot leave during your lunch break, nor are you allowed to send for lunch. If you have someone that can go and get lunch for you and bring it to you, that is not allowed. You cannot have a carbonated beverage in the cafeteria. That means no Coke, no Sprite, no Diet Coke, nothing that could um, spew everywhere if you shook it up. Extra sales offered by the cafeteria are nutrient-dense or part of the daily menu requirement. So if you buy ice cream, I guess they want you to know it's good for you. Prepayment of meals can be made weekly, monthly, or yearly. Your parents can use myschoolbucks.com to log in to that. It's really very easy. They just enter their debit card information and pay for your meals online. Our book prices and fees, really you're only going to worry about this if you lose a book or if you damage a book. If the book is new, which I don't believe any of you have new books this year because we're trying to go to all online learning. Um, but if it's new, it's a full price. One year old, 90%. Two years old, 80%. Three years old, 70%. Most of our books are going to be three and four years old. And you would pay 70% or 60% of the original price. If the page is torn out... The charge will be as if the book is lost. If the cover is missing, the charge will be as if the book were lost. And writing in the book, they're going to cause you, they're going to charge you half the price of the book. Vulgar pictures or text will result in full charge. If you take any kind of medication, it has to be registered with the school nurse. You have to have a prescription. Um, or even if you bring something over the counter, it has to be with the nurse. You cannot have it in your purse or your backpack and you cannot give it to your teacher. Um, you probably are going to have to fill out some forms with the nurse when that's brought up here. So if you're on some kind of antibiotic or something for a cold, take it in the morning, take it when you get home from school, take it at night. The school nurse is going to um, approve any medications that you may be taking. And at the end of school, your parent or guardian has to come and pick that up. If you leave it at school, all remaining medications will be destroyed unless it's something really good, and then we'll take it ourselves. For your drug testing policies, if you are involved in an extracurricular activity, at any sport, band, show choir, we're going to test you for drugs. Don't be embarrassed. When they come over the intercom and they call your name, you will go to the field house. You will TT in a cup, and they will test your urine for drugs. If you test positive, you're in big trouble. For your attendance, you must attend a minimum of 168 days of school. That means you cannot miss 12, you cannot miss any more than 12 days in a semester or 6 day, I'm sorry, 12 days in a year or 6 days in a semester course. The exceptions are school business, medical excuses or OSS. You have to turn those excuses into the office within 2 days. Guys, this is different. Please make sure you get those excuses in in 2 days. After two days, they're no longer going to take it, and your absence is going to be unexcused. Even the absences that are excused are still going to count in your total. So you can make up the work, but it's going to go towards your exemption. So if you miss seven days of school because you have the flu, even if you have a doctor's excuse, you will not be exempt. 
you must attend 63% of the day to be counted present. So that's a, a new rule, I believe. And if you do not attend 60% of the day, 63% of the day, you're going to be counted absent for all day. With your makeup work, all teachers will allow you to make up your work um, by the end of each grading period. If you're absent from school, it is your responsibility to check with your teacher about making up your work. Makeup classwork can be made up at home for an excused absence. For an unexcused absence, of course, you have to come to Saturday school or an after school program. If you need to make up exams and tests, you can make them up before school, after school, in Saturday school, or the after school program. If it's unexcused, of course, you have to come to Saturday school. If you need to check out, your parents must send a note to the school by 8.30 a.m. to be verified. Now, most of us know if we have to check out, but if you don't and something comes up, your parents must check you out from school. They can't call the office to get you to meet them outside. They must physically come to the office and pick you up. They must have a photo ID. If they do not, we will not let you leave campus with any adult, no matter if they are on your checkout list or not. They must have a photo ID. You cannot check out at lunch unless you come back with a doctor's note. Anybody checking out a student must be on the checkout list. So let's say that um, your grandmother gets sick and your mom has to go with her and they send your next door neighbor, Billy Bob, to check you out from school. If Billy Bob is not on your checkout list, we are not allowed to let you go with Billy Bob. So please tell your parents that and make them aware of that rule. Each um, day at Oak Grove Middle School, students must be to class by 825. If you are not to class at 825, the first time you will receive a short form for a warning of your tardiness. The second time will be a long form. Please take note of that. You only receive one warning for tardiness. So you will receive a long form on your second tardy. For your grading scale, it's the same as it's always been. Well, not always. It used to be different. For the past few years, it's been a 10-point grading scale. If you make below a 65, you are failing. Semester exams will be administered at the end of the second nine weeks. Um, we've always done this. We do not have nine weeks exams, and we do not have any other exams. You're going to um, be exempt from the semester exam. I'm sorry. That was all messed up. Can I start over? Because I really don't want to rewind, and it's late at night. Everybody has to take a deep breath. Semester exams will be administered at the end of the second nine weeks. This is in December. Um, if you have a year-long course, you're going to take a test in December and a test in May. If you have a semester course, you're going to take your um, final exam in December. So you need to make sure. Now, in December, you can't be exempt, so your absences don't really go towards that. But you need to make sure that you can take your semester test at the regularly scheduled time. Otherwise, you're going to have to check with Dr. Gray to make those tests up. Semester tests may be optional for students with disabilities, according to your IEP. For exemptions, it doesn't matter how many times I read this page. It really doesn't. I could read it until I'm purple in the face. And at the end of the year, you're still not going to understand it, and most of your teachers aren't either. But I'm going to make it really simple for you. You must have a 90 or above all year long as your final average in each nine weeks. First nine weeks, you must have a 90 or above. Second nine weeks, you must have a nine year above. Third nine weeks, you must have a nine year above. Fourth nine weeks, when your teacher checks for exemptions, you must have a 90, for, 90 or above. You cannot miss more than four days of school. School business does not count. But if you miss seven days and you have the flu, even if you have a doctor's excuse, you ain't exempt. Do you understand? No matter what. Now, let's say that your aunt in India dies and you must travel to India for the funeral and you are gone six days. Other than that, you miss no days of school. Dr. Gat Gray is probably going to let you be exempt. It's taken on a case-by-case -case basis, but I can pretty much tell you 99% if you miss more than four days of school, you ain't exempt. For your student dress code, um, Dr. Gray goes over this every single morning on the intercom. Our main things that we um, worry about at Oak Grove Middle School, of course, are your colors, like your polos have to be black, gold, white, gray. What am I missing? 
navy blue, but your pants can only be khaki, black, or navy. And then belts must be brown or black in color. All of this can be found on the... Also, um, let's see if it'll let us click into here. Nope, it didn't. We're going to go over dress code more in detail. Of course, dress code is very important, but you guys are 8th graders, and we're really not going to have a problem with that. If you get into any kind of trouble at school, law enforcement personnel are not, not permitted to interrogate you regarding alleged activities of the student or others away from school campus that have caused law enforcement to become involved until such time as the principal or assistant principal has obtained permission from the student's parent or guardian. What that means is if at night at home you get in trouble, you come to school, it becomes a problem, Police cannot ask you about something that happened away from school unless the principal, Dr. Gray, Mr. Ryder, has at, have talked to your parents and they say it is okay for you to be questioned. Bullying, harassment, and intimidation. When we talk about bullying and harassment, all of us know that this is a big, huge problem in school these schools these days. Um, I really really encourage each and every one of you to read over the handbook policies with bullying, harassment, and intimidation. It's gotten so serious now that people really only have to fill out a form on you and say that you are bullying them, and you will be referred to the office. Do not talk about someone. Do not cause trouble. Do not do drama. Boys, do not fight. Girls, do not cause drama. No bullying, no harassment, no intimidation. If you get in trouble on the discipline ladder and you receive a long form, they're going to place you on step one. You may be removed from the ladder after five days with no additional referrals. However, if misbehavior continues, you move up the ladder to step two through eight, depending on what you do. At each step of the ladder, you may be removed with no additional referrals. If you reach step eight at any time during the school year, you will probably be expelled from school. Everyone starts on the bottom of the ladder. We expect you to stay there. Unacceptable behaviors. This year, of course, we have a new cell phone policy. Yep, 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 yep. Yay, I know everybody's excited. If you violate that policy, it's step one through step six. Um, the first time you get in trouble, we're going to warn you and take your phone. Second time, it's going to be ISS, and third time, it's going to be OSS. All of those your parents are going to have to come and pick your phone up. Misbehavior on the school bus, depending on how bad it is, is going to be step one through eight. Profanity and vulgarity will be step three through six. Notice you go straight to step three. You're not going to even go to step one and two. Same for destruction of property or vandalism. You have many um, pieces of equipment on this campus, some books, desks, computers, iPads. If you damage those, you will pay the price for that. Stealing, theft, and cheating, that's a directly to step four um, through eight. Use of forged or altered documents like um, if you sign your parent's name on a long form, that would be use of forged documents. Lying to authorities is step one through seven. Fighting is directly to step five. Notice that. Possession of a weapon and pocket knives, too, directly to step six. That will send you straight to the alternative school. In page, on page 85 of the handbook on the website is a complete list of unacceptable behaviors. For fighting, a level 1 fight is pushing, shoving, wrestling, trying to throw a punch, inciting a fight. Most of y'all do that at least once a day away from school. We hope that you do not do those things at school because that is a level 1 fight. A level 2 is a vicious blood fist fight. A level three is you have habitually fought, you've given us a problem, we've, been, we've warned you about it, and this is your second fight or more in a year. And a level four is a fight with gang implications. For the level one fight, we're going to give you one day suspension. We're going to send you home. We could refer you to youth court, depending on how bad it is. For a level two fight, which is the vicious blood fist fight, the only difference here is you're going to get five days suspension. But when we move to somebody who continuously causes a problem, we've warned you, and this is your second fight or more in a year, goodbye, you are going to alternative school, and you're going to spend nine weeks there. 
you're going to have six days suspension before that and we are going to refer you to youth court. For level four, step six, you're going to have six days of suspension. We're going to expel you to alternative school. Alternative school may refuse to take you and we're going to expel you out of school. You have a definite referral to youth court. Make good decisions. Stay off of those fighting levels. For weapons, if you have a weapon other than a gun found on your body, in your backpack, or in your vehicle, you're going to get six days suspension and nine weeks at alternative school. Y'all, it goes straight to that. We're talking about a pocket knife. We're talking about a stun gun. We're talking about mace. Anything that can be brought to school and thought of as a weapon, you are going to alternative school, you are going to be suspended six days, and we are going to refer you to youth court. We promise. Level two, if you're using that weapon, if you're threatening someone with that weapon, or you're brandishing that weapon, which means showing it to others, if you have possession of a gun on your body or in your vehicle or on your, in your backpack or your lunchbox, you are going to get six days suspension. We're probably going to expel you and not even let you go to alternative school, and we're going to refer you to youth court. For over-the-counter medications, now a level one says handling it or passing it to another student. I know many of us, when we're at home, we take our medicine, like if I have a headache, I'll take my Advil. I go to the kitchen and get it out of the cabinet take the Advil. So some of you don't even think about having Advil in your purse. But if you're caught with that, you're going to go directly to step five and you're going to get three days suspension from school. Now, if you bring it to school to sell, or you give it away, or you trade it, or you consume it, that means you take it on campus. That doesn't mean you have it in your purse. That means you put it in your mouth and you swallow it with some water. You're going to get six days suspension and nine weeks at alternative school. Make good decisions, guys. Think about that twice. I'm not quite sure if this applies to um, cough drops, but I wouldn't even bring a cough drop to school. Do peppermints instead, and if your cough is really bad, the nurse will give you a cough drop, and she might give you a note for permission to bring your own. If you have alcohol at school, but you, no, I'm sorry, if you are under the influence of alcohol, maybe you drank it that morning, Maybe you drank it before a ball game, whatever. Um, they're going to give you six days suspension and nine weeks at the alternative school. Guys, that's not even drinking it at school. That is being under the influence. You consumed these drugs or alcohol off campus. They're going to give you nine days suspension, nine weeks at alternative school. If you brought it to school, you consume it on campus, or you have possession of alcohol or prescription drugs, you're going to get nine days suspension and an entire semester at the alternative school. Plus, they're going to refer you to youth court. For illegal drugs, a level one under the influence is going to be six days suspension and one semester alternative school. They're going to refer you to youth court. And a level two is possession, use, selling, trading, or giving away illegal drugs. Will be six days suspension and expulsion to alternative school. They could kick you out of Lamar County Schools altogether and they're going to refer you to youth court. Criminal behavior, um, if committed by a student, can result in referral to Lamar County Youth Court or the appropriate judiciary. The following is a list of offenses that can be reported. I'm going to let you guys read over these yourselves. You can all read. And just think how some of those are so simple. Um, when you talk about simple assault, that could be something as easy as playing out on the football field and you're, pay you're playing football and you hit someone else a little too hard. We've all done it. They could get you for simple assault if that other student wants to press charges. Abuse of a teacher, um, if, you know, if you're disrespectful. Threatening and intimidation, that happens all the time. Hey man, I'm going to do this or that. That's, you're intimidating someone. You're threatening someone. For um, many of these other things, I don't see this a lot at school, but I do want everybody to look at the bottom of the first column. Look at that last bullet. Unexcused absences. Wow. 
If you have too many unexcused absences, did you know that your parents can be referred to youth court? That's amazing. So make sure you're at school or your doctor or your parent writes you a note when you come back. For cyber stalking, it is unlawful for a person to participate in the following offenses. I need you guys to really listen to this. This is so important. Use in electronic mail or electronic communication, any words or language threatening to inflict bodily harm to any person or that person's child, sibling, spouse, or dependent, or physical injury to the property of any person, or for the purpose of extorting money or other things in value. Electronically mail or electronically communicate to another repeatedly whether or not conversation ensures for the purpose of threatening, terrifying, or harassing any person. Guys, this one is so scary with people your age. How many times have you seen text messages from others um, to a friend of yours, maybe, that says, hey, man, and they don't answer, and it says, hey, answer me. And then the next text message says, if you don't answer me, I'm going to kick your hmm. And then the next text message says, I'm going to get you tomorrow. That's what this is talking about. That is threatening and harassing and terrifying text messages. That is illegal. And you will be punished, not by Dr. Gray, not by Mr. Ryder, but the police will come to the school and pick you up if that is proved that you're doing something like that. Electronically mail or electronically communicate to another or to knowingly make any false statement concerning death, injury, illness, disfigurement, indecent conduct, or criminal conduct of the person electronically mailed, or of any member of the person's family or household with the intent to threaten, terrify, or harass. If you knowingly permit an electronic communication device under the per person's control to be used for any of these purposes, be careful of what you transmit electronically. I'm sure in a minute in the handbook they're going to go over this, but girls, 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 if you send an inappropriate picture to a boy, I'm telling you now, he's going to share it with every other boy at this school. We had case after case after case of this last year. If you are not more wise than that, you don't even need to have a cell phone. Protect your dignity. Do not send pictures, boys and girls, to a member of the opposite sex whenever um, you're, you know, maybe you're with friends, you're thinking it's funny, things like that. Don't do that. It is not funny. It is not anything that would be even remotely funny if your parents or your preacher or your um, grandmother your brothers and sisters, if any of those people found out, you would be mortified. Think twice before you do things like that. Whoever commits the offense of cyber stalking shall be punished upon conviction. Y'all look at this. Felony punishable by no more than two years or a fine of no more than $5,000. And if any of the following do apply, the person is guilty of a felony punishable by imprisonment for not more than five years, or a fine of not more than $10,000. Anybody in here got five or $10,000? Not me. Students of Lamar County School District shall not bully, harass, or intimidate others including electronic means such as, but not limited to, Facebook, the Internet, text messages, Snapchat, Instagram, or related means. Um, for our bus behavior, you know that riding the bus is a privilege, and you will be denied bus transportation for the following reasons. If you are using or possessing alcohol, 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 yeah, I didn't get stuck there. I just know that that's a biggie with some middle school students. I think y'all are pretty smart and you're not using tobacco anymore. Alcohol is a biggie. Drugs like over-the-counter and prescription drugs and tobacco. Don't use or possess those. 
Do not fight or tussle. Tussle, where does that word come from? Like the 1960s? Strike or threaten the driver in any manner. Do not use profanity or make vulgar gestures. Do not carry any item that could be considered a weapon. No axes, chainsaws, ropes. Do not make excessive noise. No vandalism to the inside or the outside of the bus. Do not throw objects, including paper. Do not distract the driver. Do not extend your head, hand, arms, or other body parts or any articles from the bus window. Use the emergency exit. Do not use the emergency exit in normal, non-emergency situations. Y'all know it's going to go bzzz. Do not bring unauthorized or potentially dangerous articles aboard the bus. And do not be out of the seat while the bus is in motion. Do not be disrespectful to the driver. Do not harass, threaten, pester, or intimidate other students. Y'all know what kind of kids pick on each other on the bus. Bullies. Mean kids who are self-conscious and they have no, 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 no self-confidence. So they're picking on somebody else. Y'all don't let this go on. Tell an adult. Tell the bus driver. Tell your parents. Tell somebody. Do not refuse to obey the driver's instructions. Do not eat or drink aboard the bus without permission from the driver. Do not wear any clothing or accessories that are out of dress code. Whew, as you can hear, our timer just went off. I'm trying to make um, this short enough to where you guys don't get bored. And uh, we will do this every day for the next few days. This is the conclusion of day one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Thank you.